Good morning. Hey, uh, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Jorgensen, and I get to serve as a pastor here at the church, and it's a privilege of mine to do that. And uh, I want to welcome those of you who are new. Uh, I do see a number of new faces, so I'd love to meet you after service. Uh, uh, that'd be great. But even if I don't get to, I hope that you're feeling loved on by our people. Uh, we are not a perfect church. But we are a church that's saved and forgiven, and we're becoming more like Jesus. Um, but his love, it, you know, it changes us. And we hope that you feel that love as well, and I mean that. So uh, we, we are uh, in the end of a, a three-week sermon series, obviously, you can see right here, Family First Aid. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if, if, if I said this before, but uh, I'll just say here, um, just wasn't planned. This is scary. But um, so when we, we did a mailer, and maybe some of you are here because you got the mailer of this, and uh, this, this basically graphic was on the one side uh, talking about the sermon series. And we had, we had some people reach out from the community and they were on, the, on social media, and they're like, what is this? Like, what kind of church is this saying that families need some help? And, and I mean, they, it was hilarious to me. Like, as if, I guess all the families are just, everybody's perfect. I guess I'm the only family. I'm the only guy that needs help with my marriage. And I'm the only guy that needs help as a father, I guess. I don't know. It was just, you know what I mean? It's just so heartbreaking. But, you know, in reality, you know what Jesus said? He didn't come to, as a doctor to help the healthy. He came to help the what? The sick. And you know what? It's a rhetorical statement. Because what Jesus is saying is, it was the proud and the arrogant people, like the Pharisees and so forth, who thought they didn't need a doctor. And the reality is, every one of us need a spiritual doctor, and his name is Yeshua Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 So, you know, and, and so I just say this, right? So no, no one's perfect, and, and let's not fool ourselves, and let's not try to fool other people. We all need help. Now, the best help comes from Jesus himself, and from the pages of the Word of God. And so we've been in this series. We looked at marriage the, the first week and then the last couple of weeks now, last week and today, we're looking at parenting. And I just want to encourage us again that even if you're not a parent with kids at home, um, you know, this really, there's these principles that can apply uh, across the board, especially even just if we're becoming disciple makers of other people uh, outside, you know, maybe they're not our physical kids, but we are all called to become spiritual parents of spiritual kids, right? And so some of these principles, just think in that way if you don't have any physical kids at home and, and so forth. But uh, nevertheless, we'll be moving on from this in just a bit. But let me just review really quick what is um, what we covered last week. And I gave three tips coming from the scriptures. The first thing is parents, even if you're just a disciple maker of someone else, thank God for your children. Thank God for your disciples. They are a gift from the Lord, even in those hard days. Just remind yourself that. The second thing we looked at is that we are called to be raising spiritual warriors for Christ more than anything else as parents, especially just when you think of your kids. Yes, we want them to excel in school, in grades, in careers, and everything else in life. Those are good things. But the top thing as a parent, as a Christian parent, should be, does my child, like I'm desiring that my child, my son, my daughter, will turn out to love Jesus more than anything else. And remember, we can't control that. We can't make that happen ourselves, right? They have their own choice. But in everything of my desire, that's my prayer. Everything I'm working towards, that's my desire and so forth. And then the third thing that we looked at was feed our children the word of God. And there was a multiple ways, one in family Bible study times and worship times. If you, if you missed, just get online and watch this uh, yourself. The next one is in spontaneous moments in life. And then finally, bringing our kids and our youth uh, to the church and to youth group. And, uh, and, and all of that came from uh, the passage in Deuteronomy, which we'll be getting to in just a minute. Um, but here's carrying on from that. I'm going to share a few other things that I feel like God was laying on my heart to share. And then we're going to have a special time of, of, of a panel of, of my own parents coming to share um, all the, the things they tried to do to help me that did not work out well. That's what they're going to share. So you're going to get dirt on me. But, um, but here's some, some, uh, a, few, a few additional tips coming from the scriptures. Here's one today. Spend lots of time with each child. Spend lots of time with each child. In, in Deuteronomy 6, going back to the Shema, this is written to parents. You shall teach them. That's the, what's the them? Anybody remember what it is? The word of God, right? Teach them the word of God, the teachings, the commands of God diligently to your children. 
And then it says, you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. So anytime you're sitting around on a couch, in a dinner table, right? When you walk by the way, that's more the spontaneous actions in life. But then also when you lie down, that's bedtime. And then when you rise in the morning. So what's implied in all of that is that as a parent, you're spending a lot of time with your kids, right? I mean, you can't do those things if we're not literally physically with them. And so we want to make sure we're spending a lot of time with each of our children. And so here's some additional thoughts just as how that plays out as I think of those things. Is one is, is you want quality and quantity of time, right? You know, we talk about those differences sometimes. And, and uh, you know, that's really important. Um, you know, Jesus, when you think of Jesus, he was a son. And he had a relationship with his father. And you think about how it says he often went to go spend time with his Abba, Father, Daddy, right, in prayer. And, and so they, he models for us from a son standpoint, going that way, but the Father, they spent a lot of time together themselves. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God, which is the Bible. And when we spend time in the Bible, that's us spending time with the Lord, Right? And, and he's saying that as we need to spend a lot of time with the Father, the same thing is we need to spend a lot of time with our own kids. You see the time factor. Because he's saying as often as you eat physical food, you need to often spend time with the Father in the Word. So time is important. And so we need to do that with our kids. Now, if you think about it, if, you, if we spend five minutes, like if you say, okay, have you been spending time with your kids lately? And a parent says, well, I, I spent five minutes this last week with my child, but it was quality five minutes. Now, was that good or not? You see? So in other words, quality in and of itself is important, but it needs to be both. Because if I only spent five minutes of quality time, there's, there, yeah, good, good, but it's only five minutes. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I, I'd say it's both. You want quality, but you also want quantity. You flip it around. If I'm like, well, I spent all day with my kids uh, yesterday. Lots of quantity of time. Great. How was it? Well, we were sitting on a couch looking at TV the whole time, not talking to each other. You know, you see what I'm saying? Is that, is that really good? You know, it's not quality. And so you really just want to just pray about this. But this idea is your kids, you need to be around your kids. You need to have quality within that, but also quantity. Kind of going back to that uh, Shema. How can I be teaching my children these things? That's quality time when I'm teaching them things. But it's also a quantity of time to be able to have the time to teach these things. So it's kind of, it's kind of both. Um, all right, so there's that. Here's another thing with spending lots of time with our children. Uh, is whatever applies for you. Daddy, daughter dates, father, son dates, mother, daughter dates, mother, son dates, you know, all how that works. And, and this is the idea that, especially for those that might have multiple children, is, is try to pull children away and to have those special moments with each other. Uh, I, I've done some of that, to be honest. I probably need to do more of that uh, as I think through that. Um, I, I always love every time in the, in the, on social media around, we just got through it, the Valentine's Day, watching dads uh, having the daddy-daughter dances that sometimes schools and churches put on. And I always love to see that. Again, I heard not too long ago, I think 40% of people grow up without their dad around. Um, and, and so it's so important for that. The, the father is speaking into daughters, but also the father speaking into sons. It goes all around. All of those are important, right? But just, just think as a parent, you know, okay, I'm with all my kids. That's great. That needs to happen. But also, am I pulling them individually away, right? Because even though we don't mean to, especially when you have multiple, you can maybe start unintentionally overlooking one, talking more with one than the other. And then you get personalities. There's certain kids that their personality is they're, they're going to kind of drown out the others. And then because the others are more shy, and then they're in the background. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why there's a value, I think, of just getting, okay, son, let's just you and I go out. Daughter, let's just you and I go out and so forth. And then here's a final thing with time, just to share this, is also this idea of coming of age retreats, uh, whatever you want to call those, but the birds and the bees. 
And, um, and there's all sorts of ideas out there and so forth. So one, I would just encourage you as a parent, definitely be the one who is educating your children, yourself on these things. Um, they're obviously going to get it. If they're in public school, they're going to get a version of some, some, some things there. Um, but do it uh, and uh, start young. Try to get ahead of the curve. Uh, if they're in public school, you might want to teach them when they're four. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just crazy. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, you, you, this is all stuff you pray about and you think about. But I would say you definitely, if you can, be ahead of the curve helps instead of having to undo things later, which you're always going to have to undo some things. We live in this world, right? But um, I know for us, just, you know, we, we prayed and we did f fifth grade. And when they're going into fifth grade is when we've done it with our children and I know Holly's getting ready with our daughter and so forth. So um, just, um, you know, just share things. Be, be, you know, pray about it. If you want help, just, just come talk to um, uh, our kids ministry director, youth ministry director, everybody other than me. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'll help as well. Um, we're all here to help you. But, um, you know, just, just encourage you to do that. All right, so that's some idea of spending more time and, and, and pouring into our kids. Here's the next step. We're going to go to Matthew 19 on this one. It's on the screen. Uh, here's Jim jumping into something Jesus was talking about, marriage and divorce. All right, this one. No, marriage. This is just marriage. Actually, this is on divorce as well. But Therefore, Jesus said, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. You hear the redundancy there? Uh, there's a reason for that. What therefore uh, God has joined together, let not man separate. And, and so here's the, here's the tip that derives, you can be driven out of this. A number of things could be, but one is discipline as one unit. Okay, so obviously this time, I'm assuming there's a mom and dad at home. Um, but, but when you discipline the children, not if, but when you do, hopefully you are, uh, to not discipline a child, a, a child um, is to honestly not love them. Um, God disciplines us. Why? Because he loves us. And, um, and so we all need discipline. It's love. Uh, and so as a, as, a, as a married couple, parents, make sure, though, that you're disciplining as one unit. So I got that from the, you know, this idea that we're one flesh, right? And Jesus, like, redundantly said that. He quotes the Genesis saying that, but also says it again, you're one flesh. And so when you discipline the children, uh, they need to see a united front of parents lovingly telling them what they need to hear and uh, being on the same page. Now, does that mean that as a, as a parent, as, as a couple, you're always going to be on the same page right away about what needs to happen disciplinary? Like right away. No, it's not going to happen that way. So what happens when you have differences of thought of what should be done here? Uh, you don't debate it in front of the kids. That, that doesn't go well, right? So, you, you know, you get away, away from the kids, you have the discussion, you pray about it, so forth, and then you come and you present a united front to the children. Um, so these are just some tips and some things, but against this, the principle that, that's biblical for sure is one flesh, be united, um, uh, and so forth. So I, I, know, um, I know this only happens in my house. It probably, this is not, probably not going to be helpful to anybody here, but uh, I know my, my kids once in a blue moon might want to try to get mom against dad or dad against mom. So I'm just saying, you know, that happens at least in my house. Maybe that happens in yours, but uh, the best thing we can give them is a united front. All right. So here's the final tip uh, today. Decide divorce is not an option. Okay, so this is going into parenting because trust me, it affects parenting. It affects the family massively. Decide as a couple, divorce is never going to be an option. And uh, so we're going to go back to Matthew, actually Matthew 5. Another time Jesus was talking about marriage and divorce. He says this, it was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of, of divorce. He's referring to Moses way back when. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, which is adultery, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. And so I, this is not a sermon about diving into all that, but the point of it is this. He's saying, like, marriage is extremely important. Stay together. There's only two clear biblical exceptions. There could be some others in principle, but it, it is just something you fight for and, and, you, and you commit to. 
And, and so you want to decide as a couple, as parents, even before you have kids, literally, like I, I, I do this in premarital counseling, say like, you know, if I have to, but like, hey, now divorce is never going to be an option, okay? Except for the biblical permissions, but those are permissions, not commands. There's a big difference there. Uh, if you can forgive and stay together and so forth, that's what you fight for, right? But you, you just decide, like, listen, divorce will never be an option. It's just, we will work through it. It might take a lot of hard work and time and so forth. We're going to figure it out, but we're not going to get divorced. And tell them that to your children. As parents, you're, this is about parenting, right? Tell your, your children, as they're growing up, when, it, when it's appropriate, maybe you guys are having an intense fellowship, as Holly and I call our times of, maybe, maybe others might call it fighting. We call it intense fellowship. And, um, but in those moments, like we've had some times with our kids, like, listen, no, 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 like divorce will never, it's not even on the table. We'll, we're going to get through this. It might take a lot of work, maybe take some biblical counseling, whatever we, but that's not an option. And why is this important? Because kids will absolutely love to hear that from their, from their parents. One of the greatest gifts that we can give our children is the stability of knowing mom and dad are not going to be separated. Um, and now, here's a, remember, it takes two, right? So remember, you know, I know some are divorced years, and this and this and that, right? I, I get all that, like, like, and so this is assuming that both are doing their part. We covered that a couple weeks ago. But as much as can depend on us that we're trying to stay together, that, like that, a, 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 a married couple staying together as parents is one of the greatest gifts that we can give children. And so as a couple, if you can just decide, like, listen, divorce is never going to be an option, it, it, the kids will thrive in that. And so I remember my own parents as they got saved uh, when I was a young kid, as, as adults themselves, and somewhere along the way, someone told them the same thing. Div make, make it clear, divorce is not an option. Commit to that as a married couple. And then they shared with that with us as kids. And, and I will never forget that. And I loved that because um, my parents are perfect parents. But, but even in that, imp in that perfection, they had some intense fellowship times. And, 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 but I always loved to know as a kid, that I'm not going to have to be uh, joining with a lot of my friends at school who are in divorced homes. Because I knew my parents were committed to divorce wasn't on the table. And in that stability, kids will thrive. In the instability, they, they will struggle there's a lot of kids that, that when, when there's instability at home among the parents all the way to then to potentially the point of divorce is that they, they go to other things that are not good for themselves to numb it, to deal with it, to handle it. And so again, just me, I want to make this clear. Like there's a lot of people that are innocently divorced. Does that make sense? Right? Uh, I'm, I'm not, it's not that. I'm just saying though that as much as can depend on us, if you can get to that place, I will not divorce, I will not divorce. You know, I will stay together and we will fight for this. And then as much as we can do that as, as parents, man, that's a gift to kids. It's a gift to kids, right? All right, well, that's what I got for us today in that, but this is the better part. This is when I'm gonna invite my own parents to come on up here. So won't you guys give a salvation warm welcome? to my parents. I'm going to transition here really quick and get some stuff out of the way. And get some stools. Are you nervous? Yes. You, why, why are you nervous? I'm the one that should be nervous. You're going to give dirt on me. That's, oh. That sounds... So, Mom, you can have that one there, okay? Oh, yeah, whichever one you want, actually. So, but, uh, so, yeah, this is Rick and Billy, also known as... Yes, thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. So are we almost ready? All right, try that. See if that works. Test, test. Oh. Well, we'll give Dan time, sorry. Test. All right, good. So, um, so I already told you guys what all to say and not say. So <laughs> that's... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for coming in. Appreciate it. And, um, and so as you just heard kind of what we've been covering, and I know I asked you guys to listen to the sermons ahead of time, so you knew kind of coming in what has been said. And, um, but it's really simple. Um, there's two overall questions that I'm going to ask, and, and, but um, trusting the Lord's going to use 
uh, your guys' experiences, and of course, any other scriptural uh, references you can think of too, just hopefully it'll be a blessing to someone today, and he can use, you know, what, what has happened in your guys' life. Because I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, it says that, you know, when we suffer and then we get comforted by the Lord, that then later we can use that same experience and that comfort that we got and then to minister to others. And so you guys have had to suffer at raising me. And so, <laughs> and now you can give comfort to other parents. So, <laughs> but, so the first question is, um, you know, what are, what are things that you guys maybe taught and told like from disciples in your life that then you applied into our family that you're like, wow, this really worked, really encourage you to do these things uh, as you raise your children in the ways of the Lord? Good morning. Um, first of all, anything good is the Lord, 100%. 100% the Lord receives all the glory. Because sincerely, we didn't know beans about what to do, and the Lord was um, so kind to send a couple believers into our lives that we could just watch. And um, we learned so much from them. And um, in having people speak into our lives. And uh, one, um, I thought of one thing. I wrote a couple things down. One, the Lord taught us at the same time that he was teaching our children. For one thing, we, I grew up where we just said the prayer Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed before every meal. But it was just rote. It didn't mean anything in our hearts. So I distinctly remember the time that, you know, we're new believers, and we're praying that prayer before we eat, and all of a sudden, Rick and I just looked at each other, and we thought, this is crazy. This is just not making any sense. Let's just pray from our heart. And so... There were many, many, many meals that would be cold by the time we would eat them because we would go around the table and just pray from our heart. And we would find out a lot of the struggles that the kids were going through. And um, that was a big change in our life. And then experiencing the Holy Spirit teaching us at the same time. Ryan was just little. He had just given his life to the Lord a short time before. And we had an L-shaped house so that if I was in the kitchen, I couldn't hear what was going on in the back of the L. And for no reason whatsoever, I stopped ironing and I went back to our bedroom and I I caught Ryan stealing some change from, we would keep our change, for you. <laughs> and so, but for no reason I went back there, except that the Holy Spirit prompted me to, so I caught him. Well, pre-being a Christian, of course, I would have, you know, spanked the snot out of him, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I, I just... I just sat down with him. I said, Ryan, you can't do this anymore and get away with it. You, you gave your heart to the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is going to make sure that you get caught. Because God loves you too much to let you get by with it. And the whole time I'm speaking, you know, it's such a strange thing for me. But... I learned, we both of us learned to take situations, everyday situations, and just look at them, Lord willing, with spirit eyes and spirit ears and apply them. And it was really a shock to Ryan and I that, yeah, this is for real. Following the Lord is for real. It's not just Sunday morning. It's for real. Every day. Well, Ryan's covered a lot of stuff already that, that we agree with. And um, Billy became a believer, I think it was two or three years before I did. 
And so we had a rough time, <laughs> you know, about being unequally yoked. But eventually the Lord introduced me to himself, and uh, we both became believers. This was all about the same time Ryan's growing up. He's, what was he, five years old. Uh, and we have three children and 13 grandchildren right now. So, but the thing that I think that, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, my memory's not the greatest, but I noticed, that, and Ryan's mentioned this, and that is, as we became believers, one of the things we became very emphatic about, and that was going to church every day, every week. We were, we were there. And Ryan mentioned this. He had to go. It was, I, I heard him say that. You had, he had no choice. None of the kids had a choice. It wasn't an option. They could give me every excuse in the world, but we went to church together as a family. We went to church so much, there was times when we actually left the kids at church and forgot them. <laughs> so, and to me, that was exposing them to, to, to the Lord in, in, in fellowship with other people and making that more real to them because they were obviously participating with other people, other believers. And it, it just, it seemed mean at times because they didn't want to go. They fought tooth and nail sometimes. And, uh, but to me, how are you going to get to know anybody if you don't spend time with them? And when you're in church or in youth group or something like that, that's how you meet the Lord. You get to spend the time in the Word. There's a lot of ways to spend time with the Lord. If you spend as much time as we do in the world as we spend with the Lord, this world would be a whole different place right now. And especially back in the day when we were raising children, back in that would be in the 80s, you guys have got it, your younger people have got it so much more difficult than ever. Um, I see social media, and I see the things that, that Satan is, is doing to this world, and it's got to be really tough. And this is, this is the time that we really need to be cognitive to the fact that we need to pay attention to what's going on for our children and for our families. But we didn't have, we both come from divorced families, so we didn't have examples of what to be for parents. We had no idea. And uh, like Billy said, we had a couple friends that we modeled after and followed them and got examples and ideas from them. But um, it was just, it just, it just continually chasing after God. And as we chased after the Lord, we fell more in love with him. And I remember Ryan one day saying, you know, I just realized that he's real. That you, that through you guys, because he saw that we weren't, like what Billy said, we weren't always just talking about the Lord in church. We were talking about him everywhere. And he was part of our life. And so just by example, as parents, that's probably the, one of the most powerful things is to stay together, follow what the Lord has said. He doesn't want to be mean to people, but he knows that divorce is not good, and we're, we're set against it. We have had our conflicts over the time. We've threatened each other with stuff like that. But we finally made that commitment. We're not getting divorced. And we're now going on 51 years and so the Lord has been faithful to us. Because marriage, to me, is not just agreement between two people. When Bill, even though we weren't believers when we got married, Billy and I went to a church and got married, and we made agreement to the Lord in a covenant. I don't know if anybody knows what a covenant is. But it's a covenant between her and I and the Lord. And he was, our, he was in this covenant. And so... And he makes everlasting covenants. So if he's in the covenant, it's an everlasting covenant. It's not an optional thing for you. If you pull out of a marriage, it wasn't that I feared so much Billy if I left her. I had to deal with him. I had to deal with the Lord because I had just broke a covenant that he was part of. And so to me, and as we've gone and over the years, we've gone closer and closer together. We love the Lord more and more and more. And so with him in the middle of it, he will, he will provide you a way out for everything. He promises that. And to us, that has been a cement thing. The other thing is, is because of divorce, and Ryan has hit on this already, and that is I see so many children that are being destroyed by divorce. That's, it's just destroying them. They just, they, the whole world gets twisted up. They have no security. And by being able to be there as parents, even though we don't always get along with each other and all that stuff, it still gives them a place that they could see a solidness, a place of refuge, 
uh, that you can go home or you can go to your parents' house, or you, and you know it's them. It's, they're still there. You want to add? Another thing is um, we made sure that any, any possible way that if the kids could go to a Christian concert, they could go. Even if we couldn't afford it, we made it happen. Um, because the more that they could be around other people and not feel like they were odd by being believers or being doing this Christian thing, that there was lots of other believers and it was good to get together. So I remember sometimes even when it was a difficult to, you know, financially, we tried to make it a priority to send them. So anything else? And not all kids are the same and we don't have all the answers. The other thing, too, is that um, asking the Lord to help us to raise them. He's faithful. And I know with our youngest son, Rick worked second shift, so he didn't see him all week. And sometimes I'd go head to head with our younger son, and I would reach a point where you know, you're just not discussing it right now. And I would just go to the Lord and say, Father, you father him. And every single time by the next day, our younger son would come back and apologize. Every single time. And that's the Lord. Because I had reached that point where he wasn't listening and I wasn't budging. <laughs> so... Um, and one other time with our younger son, he wanted to go somewhere. And I mean, he was, I had zero reason to mistrust him. Zero reason to even give him a curfew because, you know, because of the Lord. And one time the Holy Spirit just really pressed on me not to let him go this one time. So I, so much so that I just had to say, Lee, I have zero reason to not let you go, and I have zero reason to mistrust you, but I just really am feeling the Holy Spirit press on me to say no. And he fully accepted it. And that's the Lord. The Lord gets the glory for that. So. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so confused, though. I thought, I thought. My younger brother was perfect. I, I'm so confused by these stories. But, you know, one thing I, too, I'll, I'll say is, um, is, is, again, it's so, it's so, it's so uh, challenging for me because we want to elevate marriage and unity and staying together massively because God does, right? And to, and to talk about all the benefits that couples staying together does. So we should do that. But it's always challenging at the same time. I just want to make this really, really clear. You're looking at two people that have turned out pretty well that came from divorce homes too. In other words, if you are in a divorce situation, don't hear, oh, no, yeah, it must be nice, you know, all these kinds of things. Just know that God, though, is the God who can do every, anything, right? And, and he can work in those exceptions. And so be encouraged that he, he's there to help all of us, right? This is the ideal, is that we stay together. That's his ideal plan. We fight for that, we go for that. But when we can't be in those situations, that's when we also know the Lord can uh, help us um, and, and do the exceptions all the time. So, yeah. Well, I'd like to add, you know, you wanted to hear about our skills in parenting, right? And what have we been doing with it? We've been putting it all on the Lord because that's where our, any skill we get comes from. He's the one that's powerful enough to overcome these things. And um, like, you know, my parents were divorced, hers were divorced, and it was terrible. It was just terrible. And maybe that made it to where I made a thing that said, I'm never gonna go through that again. So maybe I, that's one of my things that I hang on to being married. We were married. I was 19 and she was 17. So the world said, oh, they're not going to make it. And we didn't know because we were believers either. So here we are fluttering out there. But the Lord had to have been looking over us and had a plan for us. And uh, so what I'm trying to emphasize, it's your relationship, it's your family, 
because your family is the first church. That's why Satan attacks the family, because if he destroys the family, he's going to get God's kingdom. We know he can't, but he still can make it rough. So you've got to protect your family, you've got to stay in the faith, and you've got to teach your t kids these things, because you're going to eventually let them go. And Ryan talked about it last week. How many, how many Sundays do you have? 936 okay. in 18 years, I think it was, something like that. They're gone before you know it. <laughs> yeah. One next thing you know, they're out the road. And we have three children, and one of our, I don't believe one of our children still has accepted to Jesus. And we have no control once they get out there that we had in the beginning. We still minister back constantly, but we, it's like you don't have a handle on it anymore. You can't just dictate to adults as easily as you used to when they were at home. And you had the control of them. So I guess I just can't emphasize that more, is to raise them up, make your faith real to them. Don't just go to church, and that's the last thing you hear about God. And, then, and I know that's not something you can do on your own, but you have to pray. We pray constantly every week, every day actually, for all of our children and all of our grandchildren. Constantly. We pray, we pray. We keep them under the Lord's coveting because he hears from us because we know he's listening. And he's faithful if you do that. So, uh oh, it looks like the boss has something to say. I saw that. I, know. I thought of something when he was saying that. Um, so now our kids are grown, but we have grandkids. So it just doesn't quit. I mean, no. we, we still pray for our children, like, ferociously. But now we... You know, I, I, I try to listen to the Lord. And when he's pressing a particular grandchild on my heart, I'll reach out to them. And a couple of weeks ago, he did. So I reached out to that grandchild and, you know, text and, you know, hey, send in a hug. Oh, Grandma, I needed that. Well, what's up? And we texted back and forth till after midnight. And... You know, so the grandkids sometimes say, you know, you and Grandpa are the solid ground because you love the Lord. And have a chance to pray with your grandchildren or your child one-on-one. -on -one. It's so huge. And, um, you know, and our kids and our grandkids, you know, I'm the first to say Sometimes, yeah, I don't agree with God on this, or I'm mad at him right now. We're, we're battling it out, but he always wins, you know. But I will bow the knee to his authority because I will bow the knee to him. I do. But that doesn't mean that I'm always happy about it, you know. So they, hopefully they know that our relationship is real and it's walking it out. So just even if your children are grown and you have grandkids, I feel a, a great honor and responsibility to minister to them for the Lord too. So, and the, the other thing I thought of was I used to pray when the kids were home, not only for their spouses, but I used to pray that eventually they would love God even more than me. And that was a really hard prayer to pray because I want to love the Lord more than anybody on the planet. So for me to ask the Lord that they would love him more than me was a real hard prayer. All right, so we need to... Can I just say one more time? Uh, sure. You guys wonder how I get the gift of gab, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't get a mic in front of me every day. <laughs> Well, you know, obviously we've said we pray for our children and we pray for Ryan all the time. And so because we pray for him and he's your spiritual leader, that we also pray for you. This church is under our prayer all the time. Uh, we support your church and we really, really do pray that this church will become a glory to the Lord, that it will glorify the Lord and he will make his face shine upon all of you. That's awesome. All right, so, so the, uh, how about, do each of you want to share one warning or, or like, here's something don't do, you know, kind of a <laughs> failure, you know, kind of lesson that okay. as, as we wrap this up, just one thing that don't do. Yeah. 
don't not apologize. We can be wrong. So don't think, well, I'm their parent. I'm not going to apologize, you know. Apologize. You mean sometimes we were wrong? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know. I'll have to pass on that. All right. That's okay. <laughs> so, well, hey, um, thank you, Mom and Dad very much Thank for sharing, and, and hopefully this has been encouraging and, and a blessing. I see a hand. <laughs> Your granddaughter wants to ask a question. So, uh, all right, how about that? Well, you know what? We're going to, we can do this. So, what, um, yeah, we got the time. All right, so we're going to have a couple, we can field a few questions really quick here. All right, this is scary. This is, what's your, what's your question for grandma and grandpa? It's not a question. Oh, give me the mic back then. What are you, what are you going to do? <laughs> okay, what are you going to share, sweetheart? Don't give my dad a hose. Don't give me a hose. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're trying to get a story. All right. Here's a story. Got to keep it short, okay? Oh, yeah, this is that. not edifying in any way, shape, or form. Your grand, your <laughs> so, he's a little, so he's a little tight guy. Oh. And he was just driving me crazy. And it was hot, and he was just beside himself. You know how kids get, and they're just so beside themselves, they're just going to get in trouble after trouble after trouble. And finally I thought, what in the world can he do that's going to keep him busy and not drive us all crazy? So I said, Ryan, why don't you go outside and water my flowers? I mean, what can you do with the hose, you know? And so I went inside for something. I don't know what, what happened. All I remember is I heard this very odd noise in the hallway. In the hallway, in our L-shaped house. So what in the world is that? I come out, turn the hallway, he's spraying the hose through a bedroom window, through the bedroom, he already got the whole bed and all the clothes hanging in the closet, closet. the closet door was open into the hallway to the ceiling and it's running down the hallway and it's got the carpet sopped. Yeah, that's the hose. <laughs> so all that to say, miracles do happen. <laughs> miracles do happen. All right, does anybody have a, a question you'd like to ask about, about parenting? Uh, anybody have a question that you want to, to ask? No? All right. All right. I think we're going to have worship team. Are you guys already back here? I think we'll go ahead and start having the worship team come up. And this is good because I really do want to offer here. Um, during this closing song, I'd love to pray for any parents that, that you would just like to be prayed over. So I'm going to be on this side. My parents are going to be on this side. And during the closing song as we worship him, um, but if you're a parent, single, married, whatever, and you just want to be prayed over, feel free to come on up and we'd, we'd be honored to, to pray over you for this time, okay? So let's go ahead and stand and get ready and, and worship the Lord. <laughs> 